I would like to turn my attention once again to the issue of inflation. And this was spurred because of a Twitter thread, believe it or not, that I ran into relatively recently that I want to uh, talk about and also discuss specific corporations as well as how this entire price hike, which is what a inflation is, the general rise of prices, is happening and how it's being framed. So this is a quick Twitter thread from Lindsay Owens, and she basically tells us that the CEOs are coming out blatantly without hiding anything, extremely adamant with their antics and outright admitting that they're rising prices. In fact, they're doing a bit more than admitting it. They're bragging about it and they're celebrating it because they know that they won't be stopped and they'll be able to continue what they're doing and continue to whack the rest of us with these price hikes while we do nothing about it. So Lindsay Owen says, as you read today's inflation report, pay close attention to what the CEOs who set prices are saying. We got our hands on the latest batch of earnings reports and it's a doozy. They're literally bragging about hiking prices while hiding behind inflation. And here are the receipts. CEOs often speak more candidly on earnings call hell when a new report comes out in in an effort to impress investors by bragging about the ruthless profit rigging schemes. It apparently doesn't occur to them that the public might find out about them. For instance, the company 3M, which produces N95 masks and other things, of course, crowed on, on its earnings call that the team has done a marvelous job in driving price. The price has gone up from 0.1% to 1.4% to 2.6%. The CFO told investors, we see that to be a tailwind. Tyson, we all know who Tyson is. One of the big four meat monopolies Biden is targeting for price fixing saw uh, profits nearly double after price hikes of 32% on beef and 20% on chicken which the CEO attributed to the continued resilience of our multi-protein portfolio. And don't be uh, you know, fooled by Biden is targeting. He's not going to do anything about this. He's just criticizing them. That's it. Uh, on its fourth quarter report, Johnson & Johnson revealed that it raised prices despite ranking, raking in billions from COVID vaccine sales. Its CEO told investors that the need for medical care and to address suffering and death is part of Johnson and & Johnson and Johnson's optimism and opportunity for its future. Kimberly Clark is a mega corporation manufacturing everything from paper towels to diapers. On its recent earnings call, CEO Mike uh, HSU crowed to investors about multiple rounds of significant pricing actions and admitted he plans to continue doing it throughout the year. So as you just got there, the sentiment from these uh, CEOs of different uh, mega corporations is yeah, it's us that raising prices, or yeah, it's us that are raising prices. Yeah, we're going to continue to raise prices, and yeah, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. So just shut the fuck up and deal with it. What? This is amazing, because what are you hearing in mainstream media? You know, mainstream media pretends like inflation is some insanely mysterious event that we really can't discern the bottom of. We don't really know where it's coming from, but it's happening. Well, here you have these idiots. They're not insanely smart. They just know how to, the system is rigged in their favor and they, know, and, and they know how to abuse it and to exploit all of us in the process. And so they're coming out and they're saying, oh no, it's definitely us. You know, you have, you know, a lot of Republicans and I mean, obviously some Democratic politicians as well will blame this on government spending. And uh, I mean, they have a, 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 pl a plethora of excuses that, that they try out whenever we undergo something like an inflation. When in fact, the reason we inflations happen, I mean, how? How do they happen? Well, the CEOs raise the prices. The people that have the ability to raise the prices, raise them. And what's the one reason that any CEO will raise a price for? To make more profit. And they're seeing record-breaking profits. I came across an article from the New York Times that talked about the company Kroger. You may know about Kroger. There's no Kroger in my area, but there may be one in yours. It's a grocery store. Uh, it's a chain. And they also own other, you know, they're a parent company for other um, smaller businesses as well. And a New York Times article pointed out how Kroger, they're seeing record profits. They're also raising their prices. Their CEO is getting paid, and you'll see in a second, tunes of tens of millions of dollars but their workers aren't doing very well. And just to talk about Kroger for a bit, 
The Economic Roundtable, a nonprofit research group, this is from that New York Times article that I just referenced, surveyed more than 10,000 Kroger workers in Washington, Colorado, and Southern California about their working conditions for report commissions by four units of the Food Workers Union. Found that about 75% of Kroger workers said they were food insecure, meaning they lacked consistent access to enough food for an active, healthy life. About 14% said they were homeless or had been homeless in the previous year. And 63% said they did not earn enough money to pay for basic expenses every month. Kroger has one of the country's starkest gaps between a chief executive compensation and that of a median employee. Rodney McMullen, Kroger's chief executive since 2014, earned $22.4 million in 2020, while the median employee earned $24,000. $22.4 million versus $24,000, a ratio of 909 to 1. The average CEO to worker pay ratio in the S&P 500 is 299 to 1. Grocery chains like Costco, 193 to 1. And Publix, 152 to, 153 to 1. Lower than that. This is, this is outright amazing. And you wonder why you see strikes and what have you. Oh, and by the way, when different localities and municipalities came out to enact um, hazard pay for these workers in their specific areas and districts and what have you, Kroger came out and resisted it, and they fought against it, such as things like a $5 an hour increase, um, you know, back when we were, I mean, we're still in the pandemic, but early on within the pandemic, they came out and opposed these types of things. And just another quick fact for you. So um, working at a grocery store no longer provides a stable income and middle class lifestyle that it did 30 years ago, obviously, is what workers say. The Economic Roundtable report studied contracts dating back to 1990 and said the most experienced clerks known as journeymen in Southern California made roughly $28 an hour in today's dollars while working full-time schedules. Wages for top paid clerks today, however, are 22% lower. And those workers are far more likely to be working part-time hours. So you're making less than you would have been, than you were making uh, back in the 1990s. Not only that, but you're on part-time hours. This is what Kroger is doing to their workers. They're squeezing them. Squeezing the life out of them. Using them as cattle. While their CEO makes off with $22.4 million in one year. That was in 2020 alone. God knows what he made the previous years and what he's going to uh, make this year and the next year. I mean, how long are these problems going to persist? We know what this is. And... We also know how to stop it. Um, a Republican president by the name of Richard Nixon actually had a solution for inflation back when he was in office. Biden could do the same thing now. Whether that thing will be done, I have no idea. But there's one thing for sure. When these people talk about inflation, whether it's mainstream media, any politician, somebody like me, who knows? And they're giving you all these different reasons as to why these things are occurring. There's one thing that will always remain true. The people that have the power to set the prices are the owners of the companies, the CEOs, the shareholders, the people at the top. It's a minority of people that make a decision that the majority of people, i.e. me, you and everybody else, are forced to deal with. Now, does that seem like democracy in any sense of the word? No, it doesn't. Is it unfair? Yes, it is. Is it unethical? Yeah. All this going on while we're in a pandemic, while people are dying, while people are facing the many other struggles that this system throws on us. And they want to whop us upside the head with an inflation and then come out and brag about it. Doesn't get much worse than that, man.